So I had not really a favorite object, but I had a favorite tool. As uh, we were living in the countryside, and my father had a little workshop to do ordinary stuff. And uh, he had a super nice uh, tool, uh, which is something like this, with two kind of wood handle here. And this is super sharp, and it was made to kind of uh, take the skin out of the wood uh, and also make it flat and things like this. And I've been spending hours using this tool uh, on things. In my childhood, as I always wanted to use um, the stitching machine, uh, you know, the ch 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 and my, my mother never warned me to touch it because she said I would, I would mess it up. Uh, so I was not allowed to touch it. So that is one of the first things I've been buying when I was 18 years old. I've been buying a stitching machine for myself. Me, I was trained like a fi for fine arts. So I was trained for painting, sculpting and things like this. So I don't, I don't exactly think that you need a, this, this kind of professional education. One of the main uh, quality you need to have is the uh, ability for empathy. Uh, meaning that um, uh, at the end, most of the time, design is something you never do alone. You, you work for a company, or even if you're producing for your own, you, you have a craftsman, you have so... It's super important to, to enter into a, super, uh, in a, into a really subtle relationship in which you bring something, but what you bring shouldn't be too dictatorship. It, the project has to kind of uh, melt into everybody's end and become better. So you need to really um, learn who you have in front of you. Uh, and and, and takes takes the, the best of him. So empathy is super important. Understanding the others is super important. That is the the core knowledge you need to have. The 3D modeling on the computer is a, is an is a great opportunity because it means that you can super nicely define the shape. You know, it's super precise. You can, you can really carve something, like make a sculpture, give it to engineers, that's defined. But if you 3D modeling, you do it on a screen. Eventually, you're going to print something, but it's going to be as big as this. And sometimes, I know by experience, that you have a totally wrong understanding of proportion due to the screen. We designed a TV for Samsung, and this is just another world, you know, the TV, just a lot of engineers, super serious things, and, and most of the time you would treat it with computer modeling and things like this. What we made to develop the TV is we asked them to bring us some screens, old screens, any kind of screens, and we've been uh, breaking them up and rebuilding them again, around them. So really making a TV, but we were making it with, with plywood around, even Play-Doh to make the shapes, like dancing with a company. It's super, if you want to make something extraordinary, clever and beautiful, you need to be in, in an elegant movement, elegant in, in every point of view. At the end, um, I mean, my brother in the studio in general. In, uh, in the studio, we make uh, a lot of prototype by our own, but also, of course, many prototype take place also into factories. But inside the studio, we have, it's a big mess, and all around us, we've got many prototypes, many pieces. So we kind of permanently look at them, they are around. So, yeah, so, the thing is really to look at them again and again and discuss them. So my brother, the studio people, uh, that is uh, the people who see prototypes first. One of the things I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the environment in general is that 
There are many things that are fake. Fake meaning that uh, people are doing something which is not exactly showing what they really are. Uh, if you take a perfume bottle, for example, everything is fake. I mean, it's, it's pretend it's gold, but everybody else is plastic. Uh, all the shape, nothing is really, is really clear and true, you don't. So we're also looking for companies that are, that are honest for what they are. Partially, we already have those companies. Uh, we, are, we have a super strong relationship, of course, with Vitra, which is one of our major, but also matches, which has been super important. So, and, and we've been, with years, we've been putting into action some incredible uh, contact between uh, all of us. So, in a way, my dream is also partially to, to, to make the same that we've been doing with it. It's been 15 years now. I'm, I'm expecting the next 15 years to be, to be good. It, it has a little, it's not exactly a love story. It's not like this, but still you have to understand that we build things partially together. Uh, and um, and uh, more than, than a single project, also, there is then one more overall approach. Uh, the company is not totally changing due to us, but still a part of it is evolving with uh, some imprints we have on it, on our product, but also on, on a more general uh, feeling. So that is also an interesting design goal, you know, when, when you start to have a slightly more influence. Is that me, I, I really admire Jonathan Ive at Apple. Uh, and what I admire the more is, um, is the consistency of the idea. And I think that uh, he knows that to achieve such a performance, he shouldn't change his idea. And, and to me, I, honestly, I feel like Apple is exactly the same since 10 years. I mean, it's exactly the same design line, but which they refine every year. Every year they do it again, do it again, again, again. And when they do this, they start to look about everything and they control everything and everything is getting better. All together, the screw, uh, the CPU, the screen, the, the, uh, the ergonomy, the look, the finish, everything, everything, everything. And that's a way to achieve such a condense of everything. So I'm not such kind of person. Uh, we are working, I'm happy to change and go in different fields at some time. So I'm not sure that, that I could do that. I think something on which we, in a certain way, contributed uh, was we started to quite a lot to document our, our work uh, quite quite now a long time ago. We've been always showing drawings, prototypes, mockups, explaining that they are not exactly part of the end work, but they are worth knowing. That is super important is to be fair, is to tell the truth, uh, to show things, things that are not fake. Again. Um, I think we are surrounded by too many products uh, that, are, that are not exactly uh, showing what they're made of. And uh, in explaining permanently the process, uh, trying also to make a design that shows the assembly, shows the material. The world has been living a super long time without designers. Is that, um, uh, because somehow we kind of never is what is relatively interesting in design is most of the time it, it happens naturally without you think about it. Uh, for example, if you go in a farm, often it's amazingly beautiful and clever uh, because 
In a farm, you know, there's a need to build many things, doors for the cows and this, and the, I don't know, bring some water somewhere. And most of the time they do it with limited resource in a quite direct way. And it can create an incredible, uh, an incredible uh, environment and quality of materials uh, around. The so industrialization made some more and more efficient techniques, but those techniques lost a certain common sense. And in a way, the designer is the one that, that, that has the patience for the technique, for the industry, but also for the end user. So somehow, is, uh, the designer is here to, 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 make, to make discuss uh, both sides.